Hey guys, I'm Aussie Chef Dan Churchill and today I'm in the food and wine kitchen to show you guys how to create an Aussie meatless pie. And a meat pie is something that's pretty special and serendipitous with Australia. It is a beautiful short crust pastry with this lovely feeling that we generally have a pulled apart red wine base of meat that is just so delectable. But we're gonna swap that out today and actually use plants to support the same tasty flavor. Is that not the Chris Hemsworth? of mushrooms. Look how pretty, big, strong, and mighty it is. So let's get into it. First thing you need to do is to make your short crust pastry. Here we have our butter, some salt, and our flour. As you can see here, our butter is cubed, but it is also cold. Keeping it cold is what gets it to the coarse beautiful breadcrumb consistency we are looking for. So, with that being said, get yourself a food processor. Or oh, nailed it. See, in Australia, I learned to just try and be a little edgy and minimize washing up. There we go, straight, oh, no! Got it, okay. You got butter, or you have the Aussie way, butter. All right, and then it calls for a pinch of salt, so, you know, go with what you want. Okay. It calls for a teaspoon of salt. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm pretty heavy handed with my salt, not gonna lie. From there, I'm just gonna simply put my lid on. Cool. So, what's awesome now is as I look at it, this is the kind of consistency you're looking for. If I stuck it together, it would definitely clump, but it's still crumbly. And that is due to the cold nature of the butter. So at this point, I'm actually gonna keep it running, but I'm gonna start to gradually add in my water. Now, gradually. You don't wanna go too far, otherwise you've lost the dough, it becomes too wet. You still want it to be nice and strong and activate the gluten, all right? Sweet. That's pretty much exactly where I want it to be. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that, sticks all together in one piece. Use your body weight, you're gonna roll forward. Push, bring it over and fold. Push, bring it over and fold. And then turn it 90 degrees and repeat. You don't have to do this for too long, just long enough that it all comes together. From here, you just wanna divide it into two, because we're gonna have obviously the base of our pie and then we're gonna have the lid as well, the top part. So from there, we're just gonna get into a nice little ball and then you're gonna roll it out into a flat disc. I'm gonna say half inch thick, I'm gonna wrap that up in some plastic wrap, I'm gonna set that aside in the fridge. All right, so our short crust pastry is in the fridge, just letting it do its thing for about 20 minutes. Whilst that's going on, we're gonna start making our filling. When it comes to your actual mushrooms, let's get crazy. So whilst we have such a variety of mushrooms here, you can just see whatever you have available to you in your local food market. Let's play a game. Name that mushroom. King Brown, all right, standing nice and tall, beautiful bit. You can also brush if it gets nice and dirty in there. Personally, I like the dirt. Good for the bacteria, good for the gut. Here we have shiitake. A little bit stiffer, particularly around the stalk, but an abundance of flavor in that one. These ones, honestly, olive oil, salt and pepper in a pan with rosemary and garlic, and this is a wonderful way to add your breakfast item. These are shimiji, love them as well. And then on top of that, we've got a classic cremini, the most accessible in my opinion. You'll genuinely get this from any local supermarket. They're probably the most affordable. First thing you do is chop the onion itself. On your garlic, put your blade on top, give it a smash. Add a bit of that salt to your wonderful garlic. That salt's gonna release more moisture. So all I'm doing is actually using the back of the blade as a hinge and scraping back towards me. And there you have a wonderful garlic paste. You wanna try and keep these guys the same size if possible, but don't be too pedantic about it. This process can simply be done also in a food processor. If you were to travel to Australia, we actually do have some pretty abundant sources of mushrooms. And we're known for our black truffle as well on the west coast. And one of the benefits of cooking with this, these ingredients is like it's full of dietary fiber. Mushrooms contain beta-glucan, which is one of the best dietary fibers for them. And speaking of, we also have wonderful broccoli. You wanna use its entirety. That means the stalk and the head. The finer you get, the more of that wonderful natural sugars you'll get out of it when they touch the heat. Now we have our sheet tray full of abundance of mushrooms, our paste of garlic, onion, and now our broccoli too. So we're gonna take this over to the stove and we're gonna start sweating our onion and our garlic down before adding in our rest of our ingredients. 
Team, we are at the stove now. We're gonna cook off that wonderful feeling that we broke down and chopped and got ready for our wonderful cast iron Dutch oven pot, which we have here. I love one of these. And they're just gonna add in some olive oil. From there, we're gonna add in our onion and our garlic. I like to add it in earlier than you would think. Reason being, you actually help your oil get to temperature with the lovely oils of your onion and garlic at the same time, which helps permeate, which means that the flavor becomes more enriched. I'm just gonna add in some little salt there as well and give it a nice little boogie stir. You are looking for each part of the onion and garlic to be coated, and I'm sure everyone's cooked with onion and garlic in their time, but if you haven't, welcome to your first ever time. It's the first time for everything. At this point, you'll get some wonderful smells about your kitchen. That's always rewarding. The olfactory senses everything. Cool, they're starting to turn nice and golden. At this point, Let's get our bad boy wonderful mushrooms into our pot. See if you can put all the mushrooms in the pot without spilling a single one. Oh! Oh no! Okay, well I clearly failed. So, whilst that's going on, we're gonna also add in our broccoli. And that pot is getting full. Look at all these wonderful, colorful ingredients. If you chopped up your tofu, cool. If you left it whole and like to get busy with your hands, you just kind of peel away like that. That's all you're doing, just crumbling it up. Tofu is a great way to add protein. It's a fantastic source of other ingredients as well. What you'll notice is when you add vegetables to a pot, particularly green ones, they're gonna release a lot of their moisture they hold on to because green vegetables particularly are really high in water. You'll notice that the pot may start to steam up a little bit. There may be some water concentration at the bottom. Most important thing is just to kind of ensure that this whole thing is mixed together and they're each getting some attention with the bottom of the pan. It's been about 10 minutes, from here we're gonna add in the next level. So we've got here, first off, some wonderful tomato paste. We're also gonna add in a dabble of our Worcestershire sauce. I'm just gonna go about that much. What do you reckon? A bit more? Okay, that sounds good. We're also gonna add in some classic vegetable stock. You can make this at home if you wish, or just store blocks fine. Along with our bay leaves. I love bay leaves so much, they're epic. <laughs> Red wine. I was asked if I want to measure this. I said no. <laughs> a lot of my classic cooking is very much like eyesight. In Australia, we are known for our red wine, particularly around the Barossa Valley in Adelaide. If you've heard of Grange, which is part of the Penfolds variety, it's always get 100 points on the 100 points score, which is pretty exciting. I'm gonna add a bit more pinch of salt as well. And then what you will need is just a little bit of flour, all right? So this is gonna help thicken up your filling. Gonna mix in absolutely everything. All right, I want all the flavors to get to know each other, just like you guys getting to know Australia. In fact, I'm gonna chuck in some more wine, just cause I can. So now we have to do is just let this simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, we're gonna leave it uncovered. We're gonna allow it thicken up as well. From that point, we'll allow it to cool because we're gonna get our pastry out, roll it out, and then fill our wonderful pie. This is that lovely filling. It is cooled down. It's got a lovely reduced consistency. It smells absolutely wonderful. Out of the fridge, we've picked up our two discs. What we're gonna do now is just simply grab your rolling pin and start to roll it out so it can fit to the base of your pie dish. I'm a big fan of the roll and then flip. What I mean by that is roll, flip. Rocket science. Just get this moving. Make sure you get your body weight over the top just to help it out a little bit. Now, meat pies in Australia, you could honestly get them with different fillings. They don't just have to be typical red meat. They can be chicken, even though like curry flavors. On like a late night out, you'd come home and we do have the typical kebabs, but we also have pie shops that stay open late as well. Test, test. I think, what do you reckon? I reckon we're good. Create yourself some room. The worst thing you can do is actually allow your crust not to fill around the edge of the base. So now that our base is ready to go, you just essentially put in our filling. This is where keeping it cold is really important. That is pretty much bang on. Okay, so moving that aside, getting started on the crust, and we'll just get this rolled out. I use my rolling pin to transfer my actual crust. Take an edge like this. Roll it over and just carefully roll this up. And you don't have to go the whole way, but then as I bring my pie back in, you can kind of test it out by doing the same thing. 
bang. So from here guys, now what you want to do is just kind of cut off your excess and you can honestly use these for shapes and giggles later. Just run your knife carefully around. You can also use scissors if you wish. You want about an inch off the edge just to work with. So work that all the way around. Wicked. And then what we do is just tuck this under. You also want to make sure there's no escaping of air from this edge. So make sure it's tucked under nice and tight as well. And then what you can do is essentially shape the edges, create patterns. So thumb in, start to create a pinch like that around your edge. And then all you have to do is slit it. Whoa, it smells so good. And then just simply egg wash over the top. But before we actually get started on eating our pie, we have to cook it off. So 400 degree oven for about 40 minutes. That is a pie. Usually you get them like this big, but we've done a family style one. If you take a closer look, you can see the lovely, ooh, little hot, crispy edges, the steam's coming out through the pattern that we created, a nice little golden edge and... Smells like home. Oh, that sound, a bit unbelievable. Look at the flaky nature already on that surface of the crust. And to be honest, I'm making sure, yes, I get right to the edge there. The reveal. Oh. Mm. So the flavor is awesome. It's definitely like the typical red wine reduction kind of ragu-y kind of thing you always look for. As I enjoy this, I've got an abundance of different types of textures. Soft, slightly chewy, a little bit of edge to it as well. All of them holding on to that flavor of the red wine reduction so nicely. You got the filling here, which is already plant-based in itself. You can go and get a plant-based crust. The butter, admittedly, is what makes uh, a short crust pastry flaky. So if you find a good one, awesome. If you do not want to chop up all your ingredients and simply just add one thing to create an amazing flavor, my team and I created the bolognese. So when you actually add in your mushrooms, broccoli, and your tofu, you just add this in you got your base already waiting. We'd love to see you guys recreate this at home. See the actual recipe down below. Let us know your thoughts with the comments. And if this is your first time to the Food & Wine YouTube channel, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Chef Dan Churchill. If you want to hit up my channel, you can do the same thing. We're here all the time to create awesome, tasty recipes that you guys can recreate at home. We'll see you next time. Bye.